Hi guys, it's Mike here from KS Pushcraft Down Under. Today I thought I'd do your review of the uh, Mora Eldris. So we've been driven inside again today by the wind. So obviously it's a uh, little fixed blade knife. Now for those of you that follow my videos, you, some of you will know that I bought Mora Garberg for my sea kayak and to say I've been impressed for value for money with this thing is an understatement. Okay. So this is the the box for the elders has all the usual specs on it so the blade is 12c 27 stainless steel so it's really a no hassles knife steel doesn't matter if it gets wet salty corrosion won't be a problem leave it in your pack leave it in your boat whatever it's really no dramas now going off the box and my own measurements they quote the blade length as 2.3 inches or 59 millimeters to the rest of this world. Now when I actually measured the blade, I measured it from the base of the handle to the tip of the blade and I got 53 millimeters but the cutting edge is the 59 millimeter that they quote. Now their overall length is 5.6 inches or 143 mil and that's, that's bang on the, uh, the number. The blade thickness on the rear of uh, 0.08 of an inch or two millimeters and the rear spine has got a nice sharp 90 degree on it so that'll be great for hitting fire steels scrape and mark off trees and all that type of uh, good gear the weight they quote 2.8 ounces or 80 grams on my scales i've got 79 grams which is close enough the knife itself at 61 grams and the sheath at 18 grams so it's a, sort of a clip point blade for us very subtle but it certainly is a clip point so really what is it for the for? it's a camp knife it'll do an awful lot of the tasks around the camp that you'd want it to do and it'll fit in your pocket so things that fit in your pocket tend to be with you Things that don't fit in your pocket tend to get left behind. So this is something that you can have with you all the time. Now it is available as a neck knife carry option. I bought this one from the States, including shipping, for 34 US dollars, I think it was. That was landed here to me in Perth in Western Australia. Now locally I can buy them as a neck knife and it works out about 83 Australian dollars. So for a length of paracord, a, a loop closure, and a fire steel. Now I don't know much about their fire steels. If it's made by a crowd that like my fire, it'll be a good one. But it looked to be quite small in the pictures. So certainly I wasn't popping for the, uh, the extra. Now, it's, they're very similar handles to my Garberg. The little diamond in the middle is a locking clip. Now inside the sheath, whether well, the camera can pick them up, there are two little uh, swages of plastic. Now it doesn't matter which way it goes in. It's ambidextrous, which is sort of a good and a bad thing. One, you don't have to worry about putting it back in, but when you do come to pull it out you don't know which way it is so I may be putting some sharpie marker on the spine so I know which way I'm, I'm pulling it out of the sheath now the other reason I didn't pop for the extras now the the belt loop on my Garberg now these are handed this two has two locking marks they're in there so uh, it's a dead fit so if this is a dead fit, the securing loop will be a dead fit to go over the top. So obviously the securing loop is longer on the Garboo, but I could soon add an extra snap on it to uh, make it do both. So I find that really a bit surprising. Now with this loop on it, you could use that around a, uh, a button on overalls to carry it on your chest pocket. Yeah, and it's really quite smooth. Now one of the other things I do like about it, if you're suffering from man pause, I actually find this to be quite reasonable. I have uh, XL size hands and gloves. And this is this is quite 
this is quite good. This has got more hand presence than say a Swiss Army knife of of a similar sort of weight. But you can reverse it, put the whole handle in there. Now if you are wearing gloves or whatever, you've got a solid grip on this. Now back to the blade. The camera can really appreciate that. It's got two grinds. So it's got a, your basic Scandi grinder at the base of the blade, which would be great for making tent pegs, notching bits of wood, making fire sticks, all that type of uh, heavier work we'll call it. And on the top, it's got what I would call a sabre grind. So that'll be great for penetrative cuts, or like cutting meat, chopping veg, all those food prep tax tasks and uh, you know, cutting things like skins, leather, webbing even. It's it looks like a really practical uh, piece of kit. Now I will do part two of this video when the weather's permitting and we shall go out and see what tasks this can, uh, this can do. And I actually think it would be far more capable than I first thought. Sure, it'll have its limitations. You won't be batoning, you won't be doing this. But in reality, how often do I bat on wood? And it's a lot of knife, a lot of practicality for the coin. It really is. Now, it's got the equivalent in cutting edge within a millimeter of a, um, of a Swiss Army knife. It's actually allowing for that choil there. It's about the same. So, uh, I'm sure I'll be able to do a lot more with this than I could with uh, just the blade on this one. So, uh, we'll find out that in part two of this uh, video, guys. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let's hopefully we get it all done. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now. Hi, guys. Welcome back. So the weather gods are still against me at the moment and the wind's still howling so I can't film outside. So uh, into the kitchen. Now this Mora Eldris straight out of the box. It is sharp, it really is. Not really scary sharp, but for a factory edge it's it's really good. So I was intending to uh, make it a mucket load of uh, stew outside today, but you won't be able to hear me speak, so that's out of the question. So the question is, what do you want this thing to do? Do you want it to cut cordage? Got some old crusty power cord, paracord. Straight through that. Do you want it to uh, butter your toast? That's always a vital job. Also, to do that, no problems. <coughs> Food prep. So I've got some, uh, some steak here, rule obviously. Now this sabre grind on the front here should be able to do a nice cut. Which it can. Into the market. I've already got oil in there. So generally when you're, you're hiking and all that, most of your food preps are pretty small. Okay. Now there's a, there's a really good reason the chef knives are large. Okay, because it's safer. So tackling something like this with a, a two inch blade, it's it's risky. It's even risky if you've got uh, what you're about in your hands. So you'll need to take out the stalk. So it would be really great if you if you have a flat surface on something, keep it down flat side. Now, because of the size of the knife, I can just slide in through the sides of it here. Now, this is not Master Chef guys. Okay, now I'll just come straight down. Take it through like that. 
I could have done the same thing. Like that. So discarding the bits of dirt one. I could actually do a fine chop on it if I wished. Quite easily. So anyway, you can you can prep an onion. Stiff blade, so it doesn't really want to pair. Carrot. That doable. That's that. fingers off. Let's hive it through. Tell you done, meat done. Hang in there. Well, hi guys, welcome back. So we've got the oldest outside. The wind's finally backed off after three days. So what would you like to do with this thing in the way of uh, wood preparation? So I've just, just been cutting a notch in here. So I'm using the base of the blade and the Scandi grind because that's got power. I'll try not to shake the camp while I'm doing this. So I'm pushing down squarely as I can. Normally I'd rest this when I'm doing it but I'll check the camera if I do. Okay then I'll come back in here. So I've made a, a notch at the square square enough. So useful if you're making traps or triggers. Okay. I use the back of the knife which is nice and sharp. I can strip the bark off. problems. Now the wood here in Australia guys is a lot harder than the, well where I am anyway, than your pines and all that, that you commonly see in the bushcrafting videos. I don't know why that is, but I know that the pioneers when they came here had to uh, change the steel of their axes so it was just bouncing off. So it does a good job of that. There's a reason, does a good job of shaving, said using the base part of the blade. Sorry. Now we're getting down to the swap now to So this is certainly capable of doing Basically, any wood prep, obviously apart from batoning, it's not going to do that. Let's try on the sabre grind. 
Yeah, that's suspected. Make a nice. So it would have no problems feather sticking. Now because of this sharp spine, I'm 100% confident that this uh, this will throw some good sparks on the fire still. Which really does. that a treat guys so for $25 US this is a really is a lot of knife for the money and I think it'd be a great addition backup knife back in the old saying is uh, when one is when two is one one is none it certainly applies but I wouldn't feel under equipped on a trekking trip hiking trip with this knife alone it really is a great little uh, package, guys. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for now. Bye for now.